Okay, there I've got some sound, so it looks like we're ready to go. As I promised to you in uh, the announcements I sent out to everybody, and as I posted over in your website, uh, I have a pre-recorded screencast that will be for you guys, to look, folks, to look at. Uh, and this is uh, in lieu of us having a regular class meeting on the 27th, which is Monday. So I, I basically intended to do some orientation about the course, the approach that we're taking, that type of thing. And so uh, I'll, once this, once I've finished the screencast, what I'll do is I'll place it, uh, I'll convert it to a YouTube video. And once the YouTube video is set up and loaded, I'll, pl I'll put the link over here in the announcements and identify it. Okay, well, uh, welcome to, uh, to uh, BISS 3503, Management Information Systems. And this course uh, is kind of the capstone, if you will, or the, or, or, the, or the final overall kind of macro course that we deal with in terms of information systems. So there's going to be a lot in here that will be vocabulary building uh, and, and Typically, where students find that there's, they have not had much experience with these types of systems, or if they do, they weren't really on top of them. But basically, what we do is we continue the theme as we have, as we do through all of these, uh, as we do through business problem analysis, as we do through data administration, that information technology and information systems are, de are decision centric. That means they serve the, their purpose when they provide you data for decision making. And data for decision making is what we call information. Now we're going to look at the enterprise or the whole company level to see what that's all about. But before we do that, I'm going to take us through and, and a little bit of a, uh, we're going to take a look at, at Canvas and navigating it because some of you may have over the summer just kind of gone rusty. And I also wanted to introduce the course. Now, one of the issues we have is not only that I had a doctor's appointment scheduled for the 27th, the other issue we have is now next Monday will be Labor Day. And, and so what I'm going to have to end up doing is another pre-recorded screencast in lieu of us not having class on Labor Day. So you're going to have two Mondays in a row where you'll have pre-recorded screencasts uh, now, Wednesday is a virtual day, all right? And so uh, let me talk for a moment about attendance. When we have a live screencast, okay, when we have a pre-recorded screencast, my, my hope is that you'll go in at the time you've had class and take a look at it, but you should view it sometime that, that week. Now, the live screencast that we'll have on Wednesday is like a regular class session. You should be there. You should participate. And how you can participate is you you come in, join uh, the uh, you you respond to the invitation, the Zoom invitation, and you come in and you can see up here. I have uh, a little icon of managing participants, so I'll be able to tell who showed up for class and. The virtual class, if necessary, can be on demand, but I really believe you need to be there for it. And again, how I would count attendances is that sometime during the, the work week, you log in, okay? This, so uh, you, you're gonna miss some things if, if you're not at the class session. And after next week, when we have Labor Day, We'll be into a, we'll be into the into the regular mode of Monday. I'll be over at Shawnee in the lab. We'll meet uh, and we'll have class, and I'll I'll do a screencast and re and record it. And then on Wednesday we'll have the virtual class days, just to kind of get you uh, acclimated again in terms of navigating through through um, through Canvas. Uh, you can see obviously here's the home area. And here in this home area, I have a welcome for you that has announcements, a course community, course questions that resources for overview, snap grades. It doesn't exist anymore. So I'm gonna unpublish it because we're not using it anymore. Banner, I'll link to that. The OU 
OBU library, the online business resources, I have a link to you, I have some professional sources. These are some publications like Knowledge and website like Knowledge of Hortons, Horton, or Insights by Stanford Business or Harvard Business School and, and the Sloan Management Publication. These are online publications that and uh, the Christian Business Faculty Association, okay? And it's, I, these are sites that I think, you, you, I have these here for you. So you'll go take a look at them and you'll start to see what the top minds are thinking about in terms of business, what's going on in the top and most successful companies in, in the world. This is so that you can, you, you can get on top of that. And so when you move into a spot uh, as, as a supervisor or maybe a, a regional manager or maybe you own your own business or you're at the executive level, you have, you remember there are resources here that can give you a sense of what are the best practices going on out there in the rest of the world. Now, as we kind of scroll down here, you'll see we have the uh, ethics code. I have an online exam policy. Here's the syllabus for the course, all right? and the syllabus attachment, the point distribution, and uh, uh, let's see, uh, I, have a link, I have a document there about Canvas course schedule resources. Now, you have all that you need, all right, and I'm gonna open the syllabus up for just a moment. All right, and <clears throat> we come down here, and here, here we get in, into the uh, into into the into the textbooks, and here they are. The first one uh, is, uh, and I'm going to zoom this up just a little bit so we can see a little better. Uh, text number one is Management Information Systems, the fifteenth edition. This is the gold star text in how do we use information systems on an enterprise or business level business scale. So let me, I'm gonna, oops, I didn't wanna diminish that. What I wanna do is, I'm gonna go to a new tab. And uh, I'll go over to the, to the book site that I use, Vital Source. And we'll go over there. And I'll sign in. And let's see, it's gonna be contrary work. Oh, there we go. Now here's my bookshelf. Now, uh, many times, well, I'm moving more and more and more to using this tool. And, and anybody can use Vital Source. So you can buy books from them, uh, and then uh, you can do a search for a book and you can buy them and you have it online. And some of you may use Amazon Kindle. Some of you may go to the bookstore. Contractually, I'm obligated to tell you that our preferred vendor, uh, we have a preference that you go to the bookstore. But there are gonna be some times, maybe uh, when you need to go a different route. Now, here are the books that we're, that we're gonna use, okay? And take a look at this is business, the business intelligence text, and this is the 15th edition. And this is our main textbook. Go to the table of contents. Okay. And this, this book, it, this is on business intelligence. It's the fourth edition. Okay. Now, we'll go back here. And this is one of the textbooks that we'll be using. Right. And we also are using the textbook management information systems. This is, this is the main text. My apologies. And this is the 15th edition. Now in this textbook, we talk about, first of all, the, an, an overarching philosophy of how information systems support company strategies. 
And if you look at the way we title our course, Business Information, uh, BISS, Business Information Systems and Strategies, then you can see how we say, okay, information is a resource. How do we leverage it to achieve company strategy and, of course, the company's mission? So this is the, this is the big textbook we'll use. And so when you hear me refer to the uh, Aladdin text, this is the one, all right? And then when you hear me refer to the other textbook, and we'll go back over there, um, business intelligence text, the, the, the uh, Sharda text, I'm referring to this one. Now, the business intelligence text is about primarily uh, around how do we develop dashboards, okay? That and, and that tell us the most important things that we need to know every day and business intelligence, how do we understand what the environment is telling us, uh, our competitors, regulators, etc. So you'll, so this is, this is the second text. Now there's a third text in there and I'm going to go back in here and, and open it back up. Okay. And I'll go back to, uh, and, and we have a third text, uh, and, uh, and this, uh, this text on, business, on the business intelligence, that's, that is also uh, a required text. So I'm gonna make sure I'm not misleading you and telling you that it is, I apologize, I'm using the business intelligence text in, uh, in, in uh, BISS 4403. My apologies, you only have two textbooks. The first one is the Loudon textbook, okay? And then this textbook uh, the um, called the Hyper Social Organization. I apologize about that. We only have two books in here and uh, the syllabus was correct. I use that, that book on business intelligence in another course, if I'm not mistaken. It's, I know it's, B, uh, it's uh, the Data Admin course. Uh, 4403. So um, you, you, here's the syllabus. Now, if you want to see, and I and I chunk. Sometimes I'll take the syllabus and chunk it down and post it so you can see what what you know the the point distribution that type of thing. Here's the grading. We're going to do some cases. Those cases uh, are 15 points each, and we have uh, exams from the Loudon text. You have some case follow ups and some interactive session exercises. Those are, uh, and you can see the point totals and how many of them you have. Then the final, and a final exam uh, on chapters 14 and 15 of the Loudon text, and then a self-developed quiz that you develop from the hyper-social organization. So I can, I'm sorry about the confusion there. You only have two textbooks. One is the MIS 15th edition by Loudon and Loudon, and the other one is the hyper-social organization, okay? So even I'm, kind of, I'm a little rusty here, so I'm kind of, kind of uh, you know, I'm a hair, just a hair rusty. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go up here and I'm, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and, uh, and, and, and this PDF, and I'm gonna go back into the files. Now let's talk about that for a moment. The files section, you can do searches uh, uh, using this little search box to find materials uh, or information. All those files are, are in here. So there's the this fall 17 syllabus, the points and letter grade distribution. Um, I have uh, is some information like for a web safari. All It's pretty much all in here, okay? And the final schedule, so you can see, A lot of different resources. So all the files that are used in the course are over in the files. Now let's click on something called the syllabus and this can be a bit confusing. Now Canvas has chosen right here to add some verbiage, okay, and some instructors do it. I don't. I've already given you a syllabus and the syllabus I have to give you is far more extensive. Some people will maybe put just a short blurb or a course description. I think that's unnecessary. But what you do have in here are the due dates, day and time, 
of all of the work that you'll be turning in. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, and even in ending up with the final exams. So you can find some information there. Now, if you're just interested in what are the quizzes, okay? And the, here they are, and when you click on those, you'll find out how many items do they have? Is there a date and time? Is there, is there a time limit? Now, this gives me an occasion to talk a little bit about uh, my policy on late work. As far as I'm concerned, in this format where you can access this content at any time, day or night, for the dur duration, you, and, and you know the due dates for assignments, I'm, I'm not really sympathetic to, to people who turn their work in late. The first time you do it's half credit from there on out, it's a zero, unless I'm convinced that you have a really compelling reason for not to have turned in an assignment. My courses, and I tell everybody, every, every, in, my, in all of my classes, I tell everybody that my courses are disarmingly or um, uh, they're, they're more difficult than they look because they challenge you to do something that a lot of people don't, won't do, can't or won't do, and that is manage your time, stay on top of your assignments. So this is a lesson or some some coaching that's embedded into this course because near the end of the course, I'm going to turn you loose for two or three weeks and say, here are the project, here are the projects you need to do. Here's the final exams, but I won't be holding class at all. So you've got to learn right now that you're going to have to be able to work independently and you're going to have to be a self starter. Well, I've had some students before tell me oh, I didn't sign up for a hybrid course. I understand that. This is just a format. Uh, I have the same course content whether I stood over in Bailey uh, and lectured or, or I used a hybrid format. But I'm using a hybrid format for two reasons. First of all, I know that many of you have commitments, especially through athletics, that pull you out of classes, that put you in a situation where you might be gone for a week. In those cases, access to a computer, be it the, uh, the computer at the hotel or wherever you stay, or having access to somebody else's computer, you can, dot, you can go and do your work, dial and get it done. And if you know you're gonna be out of town, then work ahead. And I'm, and I'm gonna encourage you to do that. Um, now, the, and so I do it to help you in terms of that convenience. The other is to get you prepared for the workforce in that if you go to work for, I can't predict who you'll go to work for. Some of you may have a job already or maybe work for your parents, but I can tell you that sooner or later, you're going to be working on a virtual basis. You'll either be remote from your boss, your boss will be remote from you, You'll be working with customers and maybe uh, uh, other, other members of your team stretched across time zones around the world. And so all I can tell you is this is prepared. We're, we're preparing you for that type of situation so that it doesn't throw you. Now, on top of that, when you come out of our, the, uh, the, the business, the BISS course sequence, you understand uh, not only how and why I use a spreadsheet or how and why I use a, a database. And I tell everybody this is like, at the first stage of this, this is like teaching you how to drive a car, okay? And once you know how to drive a car, you can drive with just about any car. And so that's what we do. In this course, we start to say, okay, broaden your thinking, and it's more of a policy approach it's more of a thoughtful approach. And so you'll see I have case studies and, and responses to readings and all of that type of stuff. So uh, that, that's, that's, that's what this course is designed to do is, is to say, okay, at the, at the company level, how do we use information systems? How do we use them to create value for our company? 
And I'm going to click down here to the key part, and that's the modules. And in Canvas, and I'll close this module up, navigate it. In Can and I have an explanation here about virtual Wednesdays. And here, here are the here are the uh, the, the different uh, the uh, the different weeks. Now, you may have instructors who use Canvas. And they and they and they have modules, but maybe they fit a theme. I've chosen to do this on a calendarized basis because I know that every week you go, what have I got to turn in for, for this class? When, when's the finals? All that. So I have everything organized chronologically, and it flows that way anyway as we flow through the chapters in the textbook. Okay. Now you can see that uh, you know, week zero. Uh, we didn't have any classes, but I'd ask everybody to come over here and visit. And please note that I have the capability to go into this Canvas room and see what you're doing. When you log in and you're there, I know how long you spent looking at a web page or how long you spent working on an exam, how long you came in and you stayed. And so I can, and, and whether you even log in or not, and so I can get a pretty good handle uh, very quickly on who and who is not participating. And that gives me some additional insight. So if someone comes and says, gee, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have to turn in an assignment late. If, if I see that you've been active, then that's fine. If I see that you haven't, that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Okay. Now, so do yourself a favor stay up with the work. Now, one of the reasons, this is just me, that I like vital source. And if I was a student, and let, me, let me say this by the way, your quizzes are open book, open note. Okay. If I were, if I were you, I'd go to, I'd go over to, to uh, I'd go over to vital source and, or I would buy the Kindle version of this book, or I'd go to vital source and buy the ebook. Okay, or you could rent. You can rent them from Amazon. I think if you have a Kindle, and I would do that for a simple reason. Number one, you can you can easily you could you know you. I guess the most important thing is that when you have quizzes as an exam and exams, you can search using keywords in that question, uh, and and to find the answer. Okay, so I, I, the the items I've chosen. Uh, fit with what we're trying to accomplish in every single chapter. So I, I would encourage you to do that. And often, uh, rather than a set of PowerPoints, I'm going to just go into the textbook and begin to talk about the topic for that week. Okay, so we'll go back over here to the courses. And we talked about virtual Wednesdays, and there's no classes. And then week, uh, the, the week of... Uh, 827, 829, which is week one. You'll have a case follow-up that's due on Friday the 31st. And so I'll just, and this is from pages 34 to 37. And this is out of the, this is out of the, uh, out of the Loudon text. And let's see what time it's due. I'll tell you how many points it is. And, and it's due on August the 31st, which is Friday at 5 p.m. Now, please note that on, 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 on I think on every case follow-up, for example, I give you instructions on why I'm after. I'm not asking you to write me huge papers. I really prefer you don't. I really prefer you put them in a memo form like you do at work. And we're going to have several of these. I'm, I'm, not, going to, I'm not here to grade your writing. Okay, At this point, you're, you should be able to write fairly coherently. So these are more like reports that I want you to do. Now, I do want you to pay, I do want you to provide sources. I want you to conform to APA. I want something that's coherent, that backs up what you say. 
So you'll see here is, uh, as I said, between two and four pages, and I tell you, you should include the following information. So you say, why should it be on, on, on case fault? Well, here it is. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. And then you also have a management decision problem. And that's page 33. And you can work on either MDP 1-7 or 1-8. I'm going to go over here for just a minute to the Loudon text. And let's see, that first one is page 33. And we'll go into part one or chapter one. Okay. And we'll go there. And as you can see, uh, you get the page numbers. And so we're going to go over, to, we're going to start with page 33. And we'll go over there. I mean, here's 33, a discussion. And so you had these discussion questions, but you have these management decision problems. And you can see, I tell you, you can do either one of these. Okay? So you'll, I very clearly label what you need to do. And then you'll have a quiz on Friday the 31st uh, over chapter one. Now, I want to caution you, you do need to study for these quizzes. Even if you have the, uh, the, e, uh, the book in e-form, like for a Kindle or like I use Vital Source here, you're really smart to take some notes and at least to have read the chapter over before you just launch into taking the exams or the quizzes. Because Sometimes I'll put a, a time restriction on them. Now, Let's look at this first one, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's 40 points, and I give you uh, 120 minutes. That's three hours, okay? And you get one shot. It says multiple attempts, no, okay? So they're gonna come one at a time, each 40, and you have 120 minutes. So if I were you, I would certainly have some notes or at the very least, I would have that ebook open as well so you can answer the questions. This way you can see the content that we want you to understand. This is a course that's about you learning some vocabulary and, some, and understanding some aspects of information systems that you've probably, not at this point in your career, uh, because you have started your career, even though you're in college, you've not encountered or thought about because you haven't worked at the level where this starts to take meaning. So what we try to do is prepare you for what will be most, the most likely kinds of things you'll run into in terms of dealing with your information systems. And so that's why you, we have these case follow-ups, these management decision problems, that type of thing. And here of course is the quiz. Now, I'm going to go back to the modules, as you can see. Uh, so you know what's due, and you can pretty much figure that when I when that when I have class on Wednesday, I'll remind you of the stuff that's due. All right, and I'll probably do a lecture on the parts of chapter one that I think are, in, that are important and worth, worthwhile. Sometimes I'll also go up into the resources area and show you some resources that I think you ought to take a look at in addition to what we do with the chapter. Okay. And so I, now if you're on virtual Wednesdays or on Mondays when we have a ground based Monday with zoom, as you can see, I can have participants. 
you can uh, you can you can beam into into the into the into the course into the screencast. Um, I can hear you. I can talk with you. You can hear me and talk with me if you have a question or you want to you want to discuss something. I keep the video portions off for a simple reason. First of all, it reduces the bandwidth that we have to use. And number two, it's just simply a privacy thing, okay? So um, you, when we talk about, we do some coverage of chapter one and we talk about these management decision problems in this first week, uh, you know, we'll try to frame them and, and make sure you know where they're at and all that business. Okay. And as we go on into the into each the various weeks from then on out, and the and I've been probably misspoken. Labor Day is September the third. I don't know where in the world I thought it was the sixth. It's it's, it's September the third. I apologize. And so when we come on the Wednesday after Labor Day, one of the key pieces is I'll talk some about the chapter for that week, but I'll also uh, speak some about the responses to these assignments, the case follow-up and the management decision problem, all right? And that'll be pretty much it. Uh, the grade book, um, we're, we used to use uh, uh, snap grades, used to, i.e. Jupyter grades. We're no longer doing that, so we'll have the grade book here in Canvas. Now, um, I'm, 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 I'm not happy that we've let that we've stopped using Jupyter because I thought it was a much better, much simpler system to use. But there are some advantages that we have to uh, using the system in Canvas, although it could be improved. Um, I want to go back over here for ju just a moment to the to the course resources and the course policies, All right? And I, I want to I want to note again, and I can't. Um, I can't emphasize it enough. I'm going to often provide you resources to take a look at like these that I have an expectation that you as a professional are going to go and look at them. Now, I don't give you any points for doing them because that's what you're going to have to be doing the rest of your life if you intend to be an effective manager and you intend to stay at the top of your game. So, you, you, most of you will, after you finish your bachelor's, I know you're going to, don't want to hear this, you'll have to go get a master's degree. So it's better for you to now to cultivate the, the, the uh, to cultivate an inquisitiveness. Why, why does a company have information systems that it uses? Why did, for example, did OBU choose Canvas over Blackboard or some of the other product or Moodle? Those products are out there. Um, email systems, all of those kinds of things. And I really encourage you uh, right now, for example, a, a major policy issue for a company like Facebook is this, you know, the, the, the Russian hacking. And so everybody's mad at Facebook about all of these fake websites that were set up. Twitter is the same way. We also know that they've attempted to infiltrate uh, our power grid, they've tried to hack into the Democratic National Committee again. I think now they've tried the Republican National Committee. And, and so that's, that, 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 that's a security piece that's very, very, very critical. And not only in terms of vital kinds of, of, uh, of, of programming resources, but all of these issues out here right now about like cryptocurrency, um, and I, I just got through viewing an article on a uh, Bitcoin uh, and, and uh, pardon me, blockchain. And blockchain is a real interesting concept because as you know from economics, and, and if you paid your finance course, you should know that for, trans, for, transactional fa for financial transactions to occur, there has to be an intermediary. Now that intermediary may be an eBay where in theory people load their stuff and then it's kind of like a giant garage sale and then you find it, you buy it, or um, a, uh, an e-commerce uh, retail operation like an Amazon or a what, we, what I would call an e-commerce vendor supplier 
uh, um, uh, type of, of, uh, of arrangement, or like you go to Walmart, for example, you order your groceries, then you go pick them up. Basically, what they're doing is that they're taking the systems they've used to deal with their vendors for years, okay? And rather than them buying stuff, this time they're selling you their groceries. You get the groceries, you go and you pick it up. Now, I've used it. There's some glitches with it. I don't like it. I hear other people who like it. And that right now is kind of the holy grail. Uh, the other, really, the, the true holy grail is solving what we call the last mile problem. And that is getting the stuff from a warehouse to UPS to your home. See, as as they as 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 stuff is in the in the value in the supply chain, the most difficult part is getting it the last mile, because then you, the distribution points get smaller and smaller, and it becomes a really severe strain on the economics of it. It's one thing for FedEx. For example, a load of, to, to fly in Oklahoma City with, with a, a cargo plane loaded with stuff. It's another to start to break that down, figure out what goes on somewhere, what goes on with that plane to Dallas, Dallas or maybe to Denver, and what stays in Oklahoma City. And then Oklahoma City got 658 addresses you have to deliver it to, and, and you've got different delivery times. You get my drift. Okay, so we're going to see those kinds of things and how they play out and I'll have some resources for you now. And I'll show you some of these examples here. Okay. And we have it, a, uh, these work. And I'll often come in with some, some resources for you to take a look at. Now here's, here's one here. I do a web safari where I've got several websites. I take you to, here's a history of cyber attacks. Here's a TED, uh, I guess, speaker. So you see, as we begin to move into the semester, I try to broaden things more from just simply a discussion with uh, over the chapter. In fact, what I'll often do is I'll pop down here and say, take a look at these, or I may even upload uh, a, a document for that, for that day, a document with links to websites and say, okay, here's some places I want us to go take a look at that are germane to that topic in the chapter that we're looking at. Okay. So that's, that's pretty much it in terms of, of the course, how it's laid out, uh, how it works. Um, the, the score and the grading, we've talked about that. That's in the point distribution. Uh, we've, we've spoken about, I've spoken about, um, uh, my philosophy and approach with the course and and what I'm intending to do and that is to get you to think big picture about information systems all right and then how do we get them to mesh or to coordinate so that we can get uh, we, we can make good decisions so that we get good information and make good decisions or appropriate decisions. And this is, this is, I, I say manage, BISS 3503 is kind of the policy, business policy course for your understanding information systems. Okay, and, and we'll, so you're gonna see a lot of terms in here at times that you may not understand. And that's okay, because they're often gonna be uh, things that you just haven't had the experience with or you've experienced them and you weren't aware of it, okay? And that's, and, and those, most of you are 18 to 21, 22 years old. I would be surprised if you understood everything about enterprise computing, okay? I, I would, I'd be astounded, unless maybe you'd been working and then you came to school here. So that, that, that's a good, I think, good place for us uh, in terms of, of, of uh, calling it a day. I think I've covered everything that I that I would have covered if we if we were going to have class on the 27th. So here's what I'll do: I'm going to save this and convert it to a YouTube video, okay? And then once I've I've converted it to a YouTube video, I'm going to I'm going to post it in an announcement over here for this day. Now, each week we should have 
uh, 150 minutes of instruction, 75 minutes each day uh, for the two different meetings. That's how they get you. You're going from two o'clock to 3.15 because you're supposed to have 150 minutes and you should do some out of, if you go and take a look at these resources that are over here, okay, uh, you'll find that you'll put that time in. And so just since I think we've kind of covered the basics here, all right, um, I want to take a look for a moment just at some of these, a few of these resources. Now, here's the OBU library, online business resources, okay? This will launch you over there to them. And this is all the business resources. This, this, these are the business resources home. So when people tell me, students tell me, oh, I'm getting to the library. If I'd had this when I was, when I was going to school, I would have thought I had, had died and gone to heaven. Uh, and you have all of these different sources you can go to. So there's no excuse if, if you're assigned a paper or, you, or I say to you in, in a, in a follow-up, a case follow-up, hey, have so, follow this up. You can do the search over here, okay? And now... Um, let me do this for just a second, and we'll go back. Now, just, uh, the, the OB library. Now, here's a publication I mentioned earlier: Insights by Stanford Business. They and they have uh, things online. This is their online version, and you, if you buy it, now I think they'll usually will limit you to a certain number of times you view them. But if you want to see uh, what the people at Stanford are thinking about that, and they're probably the top people uh, in, in the in the world in understanding about how to use information systems, okay, for businesses. And here's some here's some good articles that are related. Here's one on ad skipping. But certainly if you're a marketing student, for example, you'd want to take a look at this because as you know, more and more, more and more money and effort and time is being put into digital marketing. Why? Because people don't watch their TV like they used to. Uh, people don't read the papers. They don't take magazines. And so you've got to find the websites they go to and, and have those banner ads or pop-up ads or whatever. We've all had those, those questions, those experiences. And do I want, if I've been out searching for shoes, do I want every time I log on to see a, you know, deals on shoes from so-and-so, there's a point where you know, I don't care because I understand that what they, what they have gotten it is a signal for me I'm looking for shoes. Okay, so I don't see them as annoying. All right, now, some of them can be if they want, just want to shut up, but uh, it, that, that's, a, that's a, this is a, a good, this is an excellent, excellent piece that talks about uh, these ad skipping. And look, I have cable at home. I can record up to, I don't know how many hours of programming. I can record six things at one time. And when I watch those, those, uh, those items I've recorded, I just scroll through the, through the ads. Okay. Most people do. I'm, I think that we're going to come to a point where people will be able to buy a TV show, uh, or a movie, uh, or, or some type of digital content without paying, uh, they may pay a fee to, to, uh, to do that. And you even notice now with YouTube, uh, when you go to watch a video, they'll give you the thing that we can skip the ad after five seconds or whatever, okay? So that's a, that's a, po that's a, po a, a policy issue related to this course that, will, that would certainly bear some some uh, thinking. Now, again, the there are some other stories here, and I think and, and here's an interesting one: a robot with wheels. So, 
how do we how do we deal with this? And in fact, um, I have an exercise for you at the at one of the parts of your final exam, or it's a project, is I have you go and analyze infotainment systems in cars. All right, and uh, all I can tell you is I'm someone who's who's a technology geek. You, you probably have figured that out already. And the, the technology on these vehicles absolutely is off the charts. When I realize that I can, I can pull up a weather map or I can pull up uh, uh, um, directions to get to a place, or if you have Sirius XM, you've got I don't know, hundreds of channels of media. All of this, these, uh, and, and not only that, the, all the driver assist kinds of tools. The infotainment system itself okay is is incredible incredible leap for for automobile makers and what's happening is as you use those tools as you your cars have your, your vehicle has sensors as you drive all that data is stored in a server somewhere and one of these days okay is there you'll probably have insurance that's tailored exactly to you so if you speed a lot <laughs> you'll pay more if you like to run through the the stoplight when it's yellow just about to turn red they'll know that and you'll probably get a list from your uh, insurer that says here's seven or eight things you did that are a little questionable so your insurance is going at three dollars a month so instead of drawing it out of a big actuarial pool it's tailored exactly to you. Uh, so that, that's an interesting piece of thing that's going on. And, and, and certainly these, these autonomous vehicles um, are incredible. So there's a lot in this course we're gonna, be, we're gonna have to talk about and how, do we, how does the company deal with it or respond to those kinds of things. Here's the Harvard Business School, I have links to them. This is HBR. And here they've got some topics of the day. Okay. And here again, of course, cybersecurity, a massive, massively important topic in IT. And some more things about what tech companies to do. So this, the people, the people here at the Harvard Business Review are renowned as the best business people in the world. Now here's Sloan MIT. Okay. And they have more of a bent towards technology. You see, for example, they're talking about machine learning, KPIs, and that's uh, a knowledge and performance indicators. Okay. Digital transformation, a lot of top topics there. How I, AI, artificial intelligence can amplify human competencies, AI driven leadership. So a lot of good information and insights and, and you might as well train yourself now to look for that stuff because that's where, the, that's where you're going to see insights by people who are innovators, insights by successful companies. You'll have a sense of what's going on. And once an employer figures out that you think like a business owner or partner as opposed to just employee, that's when you become the most promotable. Um, and we'll go back over here for a sec. We've, we looked at uh, the uh, Stanford, there's knowledge at Horton. Here's the Christian Business Faculty Association. You, this is a link over to a, a peer reviewed journal of people who are Christian, uh, fa Christian faculty who teach business, trying to, to, to provide research and thought pieces about what does it mean to have, to, to have a, a what does it mean for, for Christians to, how do they operate in the marketplace? 
how should a firm behave? And, and, and so there's a lot of good information on there. Then you see my policies, et cetera. I also have a link here on how to make a, a transcript of a YouTube video. And as far as I know, when I post a video at, at, uh, at YouTube, you should be able to make a transcript and I have a list. So if you want to see a transcript, then, and you say, I can read faster than you can talk, which is true, then that's fine. Okay. I really encourage you to, to, if you view the thing, do it in chunks. All right. And you have, you have the luxury of viewing 20 or 25 minutes or 15 minutes and, and mark down when you stop and then come back and look some more. You don't have to sit through a whole 75 minutes of lecture. Okay. That would be great, but it's not required because you can, the, the content's there. You can see the transcripts, you can chunk it through, through 15 minutes, segments, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And if you have a question about something you see, you can always say, okay, now Dr. Harmon, at the one hour, 16 seconds mark, you said this. I'm not sure I understand what you mean, okay? So you have, there's, you don't have to miss lectures anymore. All right. Now, um, I talked about the point distribution and then about virtual Wednesdays. And I think then we've, we've gone about as far as we can go today uh, and, and as far as I want to go today in terms of just what we would do. So if we, if we met Monday, which would be our first class meeting, um, this is pretty, this is what I would do and what I would cover. So take a look at this. I'll have, this will be pre, this is being pre-recorded. Today is Saturday and I'm going to post it. Once I convert this uh, YouTube, uh, convert this to a YouTube, um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to convert it to YouTube and then post the YouTube video link over here in Canvas. Okay. I hope you're having a great weekend, a good start to the class, uh, to, to the fall semester. And, uh, again, our, I, I'll have this pre-recorded session for you for, for everybody for Monday. And then on Wednesday, I'll do a live screencast. And I've also posted on my door and posted on all of my courses, my schedule for week, z for week zero and week one. Okay, thanks a lot everybody. And I'm gonna stop the share and then I'll end the recording and uh, I'll post it once it's ready, YouTube videos produced.